Halloween makers. This is another make from the Tim Holtz Halloween 2023 ideology release. And this one was a divided drawer that I made three different sections kind of inspired by not only the things from the release, but also kind of a Halloween carnival feel or theme. So I'm excited to talk to you about how I made this and talk through it and all of that. Uh, I will warn you just very quickly at the beginning that I do a pretty good job stopping and uh, showing you all the steps until the very end. I am always under kind of a deadline crunch. And so at the end, when I was filling each section, I kind of got focused on finishing that job and not stopping uh, to record everything. That takes a lot of time. And so I ended up just focusing and finishing it. So at the end of this tutorial, I will take time at the during the wrap up to talk about each thing and try and explain uh, how I put all of the, the final parts together for you. For this make, I'm planning something fun and simple that is just Halloween candy focused and isn't have a huge backstory or doesn't have anything like that. Just a bunch of imagery and fun Halloween candy that's vintage focused that you could put out and just enjoy uh, without it taking a ton of time to make. So I'm starting with a vignette divided drawer and you know there are three sections in the divided drawers. I'm going to cover this differently than I have in the past. And so I'm really hoping that it works well, but I'm gonna be cutting the papers and I'm using these three backdrops. And I'm gonna be cutting the papers, the height and just wrapping it all the way around. And then I will use something to separate each, each drawer that will go all the way around, maybe a black strip of paper or something like that that will go all the way around but I just thought it would be fun. Usually I do the outside in a completely different paper. And this time I thought, I think I'm gonna go all the way around this way. I think that'll be a fun different way for me to do that and make it all this, you know, this color. And then, okay, love the new confections in the different colors. So I'm gonna be using candy uh, confections in each area. I love these. These are super fun. And then uh, since there's two of them and there's three boxes, I also want to add some things from the sticker book. There's some super cute things in here that we can use. Portraits and um, stickers, little masks that we could put on paper dolls if I want to add paper dolls. Lots of bats, uh, which I think is fabulous. So there's just some fun, fun things in here that we can add to make it super easy and there are these, uh, if the ephemera pack has a lot of really fun things in it that we can use. One of my favorites is this glue advertisement. I don't know why, but this is one of my favorite things in the entire ephemera pack. I just am absolutely in love with it. And then there's another one that has something with the word Valentine. It's really old and crinkly looking. Totally love that one too. So I plan on putting this in one of them just because I think it's really cool. And I love it. I just want to look at it. Okay, so just so many options with this year's release. And so I'm just excited to make it something simple, not a big, like I said, not a big backstory, just candy and a fun little Halloween make that I hope will be quick and simple. So let's go ahead and let's get making. I have the papers cut for the vignette box. And so I wanted to kind of show you on this what I did to cut the three different papers, because remember I'm going to be going around the box with the color instead of cutting just like individual pieces so much. So anyway, I measured this on the inside and then I cut a piece this way across that was this height. So that's this piece. And then when I looked, it will pretty much fit inside like that. So the next piece needs to be wide enough that it can go around and it will cover up to here and here. So it's gonna need to be wider 
to cover part of this and then at the top. So probably at least three eighths of an inch wider, right? So the next piece I cut is wider to cover here to here. And I will go, um, I will actually be covering the front here. I'll be starting there and then going around. And then I cut a second piece so that I can stop here. And then this one will cover from here to here. And then you can see that I will be left with enough that I should be able to cover a little bit in here and a little bit um, up here so that it's all covered with the striped paper in that box and on the outside. All right, so I did the same thing. Now these are a little taller already. So with this one, I ended up having an extra strip of paper and, oh, here it ended up here because uh, it wasn't quite as deep as these two. So I didn't really have much left over with these two, but the inside one was still a little thinner than the ones that went around the outside. So I always cut that one first and then I cut the ones that would go around the outside. And then hopefully I'll still have enough to cover the tops and the bottom. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and just start covering each box. There. And now these do come out. And so a lot of times what I'll do when I'm trying to cover something, I do wanna be sure that these stay in place. So I'm gonna add a little bit of collage medium and I'm gonna go ahead and push it down in there. And same thing here and that will just make it a little bit easier when I'm covering with paper and I won't have these kind of sliding out. So oftentimes I will just take care of that right away. And now I don't have to worry about it. As you can see, I have the outside and inside of the box all covered. And now I'm working on the things that I said I wanted to use to not only cover the, this, the lip of everything, but also I want it to go in between all of the colors to make a separation. So I've already done up here. You can see all the way around. I think I need to touch that up a little bit. Um, so I will touch it up with some uh, black soot distress paint when I'm all finished. But what I have here are some strips of chipboard. And it's a thin chipboard that I've been using for uh, lots of projects lately. I purchased it off of Amazon. And it's about the thickness of two heavy stocks. And then I attached it to a piece of just black craft stock, ideology black craft stock. And then I went around it with, and I missed that a little bit, so I may put that facing down. But anyway, went around each side with black 
soot distress paint to try and cover up the the chipboard um it may have been easier to just use two pieces of black heavy stock and glue them together and then glue maybe a piece of the ideology craft stock and i'm going with the craft stock because it has kind of a brown more of a brown tone than the black heavy stock but i think it would have been easier to not have to paint it but maybe with the craft stock i would have had to anyway so i don't know i always seem to be adding steps when you know i'm trying to make something simple so then you can put the edge right here and you'll kind of bend it around and it'll make it to the end over there and you just attach it with some distress collage medium and hold it in place until it sticks and then I trimmed that part off and I took another one and I just did across the back and so that's how I'm going to do each section here and the bottom so that there's separation and then I know I'm crazy but um, I'm going to go over, I think I'm going to drill some holes and add either some brads or some tack nails because I think it needs just a little something else there for texture. So either brads or tack nails once I get these all glued and attached. All right, so I just started kind of placing some things in the different compartments now that I have the outside covered and I put the uh, black strips all the way around. I did want to show you that uh, on the back side, I did add some pieces of ephemera. So this one, I didn't have to do anything to because it's just so incredibly awesome. For, the amuse for skill and amusement only and uh, the French lottery ticket, I did add some brown distress ink and then spritz them before I attach them. And on both sides, I went ahead and folded them over so they went around the corner so that whether you were looking at the back or the sides, you saw something a little bit interesting. On the front, I still have to add, and well, and on the sides, I still need to add the brads or the tack nails for interest. I think I'm gonna paint them um, crackling campfire because I have my crackling campfire distress paint out here. And I think it's the closest to this lantern. I painted one of the drippy candles in the crackling campfire and I think it looks the closest to this. So trying to decide what I'm gonna put in each section, I decided to keep it where I had a portrait in each corner because that's gonna allow me to run the lights behind each of the portraits. So I colored them with distress crayons and just to give them a little interest and added a mask to each one. So that's done. And then also in each one, I added a couple of pieces of ephemera that I colored with, if they weren't already orange, I colored them with carved pumpkin and layered most, I layered them on the little labels uh, and then um, put pop, uh, foam, I popped foam squares behind them that I get from Simon Says Stamp. And then in this top one with the kitty, I know this is a lantern also, but uh, I wanted some place to put the really cute orange and black confections from this year. So those are going in the kitty lantern. And then this one will be more of, you know, lights and lanterns and candles and stuff in this section. And then down here, I will have the, I think I'm gonna go ahead and have one more candle down here and I might paint it candy corn a medium sized one. I might paint it candy corn colors to go in the back corner. I have a, a candlestick in the back corner back there. So I might do that. And then I'm going to have the candy corns coming out of the cauldron. So I need to put something in the bottom here so that the candy corns on top, uh, you see them all. I don't want them down in the bottom of the cauldron. So I'll get my foam, a foam ball or something in there. Then I need something to hide as always, something to hide the candles so I think that the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna run the candles up behind the portraits they'll be on the ceiling they'll go up behind this portrait 
on the ceiling and then up behind this portrait. I will have to pull a couple of lights out and into this lantern because I do want this lantern to light up a little bit before I run it up into the third one. I'm not going to light this lantern up at this point. I don't think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's the plan for this. I have some painting to do of the drippy candles, and then I'm going to do some research and figure out which, um, which thing I like the best to cover the lights, and I'm considering using fringe from last year's Halloween release. I so love this fringe and I'm sorry that it isn't back this year, but it is still widely available. And if you didn't get any last year, I would encourage you to grab some so that you have it on hand. It goes a long way. Um, and so if you did get some last year, I'm sure you still have some left over. So I'm thinking about using this across the top here on each one to kind of hide the lights or I might use the etc. bat trims, or both. Just in case you haven't used the fringe before, I did want to show you how to do this. It is basically crepe paper or uh, streamers, crepe paper streamers, and they're sewn down the middle with thread, and then they're fringed almost up to the, the sewing. Um, and so it's a couple of layers of, so you can see here, it's a couple of layers of the crepe paper. And so you want to kind of separate those layers, but you don't want to like go through and do this, right? So you just take it and you just crinkle it like that. And you don't have to be gentle. You're just crinkling it. And then you can even act like you're making, you know, balls or meatballs or whatever then I oftentimes will unroll it so that I can get a different angle on everything so you really want to crinkle that up because you really want those separated and see how it fluffs up isn't that cool I really just love this and it it's so good for, you know, if you're working on something for covering up little, I don't know, little areas where there's nothing. Really good for that. So you just kind of keep doing that until you're happy with the fluff. Okay, so look at that. Simple enough, right? And if there's any little areas where you're not really happy, you can just kind of work on those. There. See? So good. So then, as you can see, I know this is from the top, but I could just kind of put it up here and the floof uh, would cover those and adds kind of a carnival feel to it, which is what I was hoping for for this, kind of have a little carnival party, Halloween party feel to it. So I can do that on each one at the top. I think that'll be great. All right. That is Fringe. And I hope that you get some if you don't already have some. All right. Another thing while I am planning out what I'm going to use, if I'm going to use the Fringe or if I am going to use the Bat Etc. trims, I thought you might not know about the Bat Etc. trims. So there is a Halloween set. It contains three of each of the bat or web trims and then some stacking strips in different sizes and you know I love the stacking strips so this is a bat one and as you can see it has the smallest four five and six inch trims and they're bats and then these are stacking strips to either um, layer it away from something or um, kind of on top of it. It can be either one. So if I pull this out, you can see that it's a bat and that it can go across the top here like this. If I use the four inch one and it hangs over just a little bit, which isn't bad. 
And sometimes I've used it like this where the bat's upside down. I think that looks cool too. And it just gives it kind of an interesting look. So you can do it either way with the bat this way. And then the stacking strips go behind it or they can go on top of it, either one. It can also be the bottom of a shelf. So you could use this as the bottom and then you could use a different et cetera, four inch et cetera trim on the top, like the scallop or the pinked or something like that, that would come out as the shelf. So you could use this kind of as the base of the shelf. And if you didn't feel like it held it enough, that's where the stacking strips come in. So you could put a couple of stacking strips behind it and the shelf coming out. So that's the bat. And then the, I think I've used a lot of the, this is the, I guess this would be the five inch uh, webs. And so these come in four, five and six inches as well. Aren't they amazing how thin they are? And so these you can use the same way. They can go across here or they could go up. So either way, and I think that adds kind of a really cool addition as well. So that's why I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use this or if I'm going to use this across there, or even if I'm going to use both. All right, well, maybe I'll inter intermix bats and cobwebs. I don't know yet, but that is the Halloween, et cetera, trims in the bats and the cobwebs. I need to paint the tack nails so that they're orange and just add a little bit of fun and interest and texture all around on these side things. So I counted how many I'm probably gonna need. So I it would be a maximum of 32. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint 32 just to be safe. Um, I'm gonna paint them crackling campfire so that they match the orange of everything else that I'm doing and in order to paint them and let them dry I stuck them in this foam thing so this is a foam spacer that comes as part of the packing between the large and the small vignette trays and so to keep the small tray from knocking around and completely breaking uh, because those glue those all these pieces the vignette pieces are just glued together and so they easily can break apart in shipping if they you know don't have something to keep them from sliding around too much so uh, this keeps the tiny tray from moving too much and breaking and I save them all the time because you can use them for dimension behind pieces. You can cut little pieces off of this and use it for dimension behind things or to pop things up. Um, but also you can just push the tack nails into them. That's all I did. I just took the nail and I just pushed in and uh, I have my 32 nails here and I'm gonna paint them. So that's kind of how I do that. And then I can set this aside they can be drying while I'm working on something else. And when I start painting these candles, I have some chipboard strips that I will just attach these to with some double-sided tape. I'll paint them and then let them dry. And then I will age them with a little bit of black soot uh, watered down. So it goes into the crevices and it gives it just a little bit of age in the crevices like that and then see then it'll match this that also has a little bit of age while i've been waiting for everything to dry i decided how i was going to put the batteries for the lights in and where i was going to drill my holes for my lights and all of that stuff so i decided i didn't want the battery pack on the back because i didn't want to cover up these cool things and so i was going to put the battery pack at the bottom well that means i can't sit it on the uh the base because the battery pack's there and i also need to hide it because it's unsightly so the way i decided to do that was to take some of the pinking pinked etc trims and i took the six inch ones they were plenty i had, took two six inch pinked etc trims painted them black on both sides and then I cut them and you can cut them with scissors or I bought these uh they're like miter snips that you can get off Amazon and they have a little thing that tells you what the angle is 
So if you wanted to cut corners or something like that, I've used this on things where I wanted to cut corners, but this I just wanted to, I think it's really fast and easy to trim my et cetera trims with this. So that's what I do. So out of each long one, I got a three and a half inch strip and one that fit along the side, which is about, oh, one and, what is that, five eighths? Something like that, a little over one and a half that will go in between. So I measured before I cut because you also have to make sure that when you're putting it, that you leave room for the two front, the front and the back piece. Uh, so you need to take that into account when you're cutting these pieces like this, because since it's gonna go in between, I don't want this part showing like that, okay? On the front, I want it hidden back here like that, okay? All right, then you can just put some collage medium on here and then hold it onto the bottom, but I wanted it to be a little more sturdy since it is a base. So I went around some of the stacking strips and attached them just inside. And when I put them on, I put the adhesive behind the stacking strip and then I lined this up where it needed to go. And then I pushed the stacking strip against the, the bottom of the... Uh, of the box so that it was in the right place. And then I can put glue here, and then I can put glue here, and then I can hold it and I push on it just like this. So and then as you can see, I just have these stuck on with uh, foam tape right there. And so you can get your finger in here and get that turned on, all right? You can also change the batteries if you need it. So I have my glue going to put that right there on the stacking strip and then all along here okay and okay. I don't feel like I have enough glue on that side And then I just hold it until I feel like it's going to stay in place. So I'm not going to make you watch me hold it, but that's how I do that. As you already saw, this is the finished product. And I checked back to make sure I didn't repeat myself. I want to know where I left off with the tutorials. And again, before I get started with the walkthrough, I did want to apologize again that I wasn't uh, able to continue the detailed videos to explain every step. Um, hopefully the ones that I did include in the video tutorial will be enough along with this walkthrough that you would be able to create something similar if you would like and that hopefully it explains how to do enough of the steps uh, to make a project like this. So I left off with the fact that I was putting on the base of the piece and I had the front piece put on. You watched me put the back piece on and then I added the side pieces, let them dry completely. And um, usually you can let it dry sitting up like that so that there's pressure on it uh, once you get the pieces into place and you can work on other things. Now, the reason that I did that is because I needed a place to hide the battery pack, which I showed you before, but unfortunately I didn't actually show you me lighting the piece up. So let me show you that I did drill a hole in the bottom here and in one of the last portions of the video tutorial, I showed you that I had some things kind of just mocked up in place so that I would know where I wanted the, the lights to, to go. And so I would know what was gonna maybe be covering them that I could run them behind. So I knew that in this box, I would have the portrait over here. So I ran the lights up in that corner and then up toward the front where I held them down in the corner and along the front. You can see if you look that I held them in place with some little black strips. And those strips are the leftover pieces of uh, black heavy stock, um, craft stock that I had cut to go along here. And I just took the leftover pieces of craft stock 
they were quarter of an inch and so that fit pretty much my quarter of an inch red double-sided tape and so I put this on and as you know once you peel off the red backing uh, the tape is clear and then I just kept my scissors with me and I would just trim the pieces of craft stock peel the red stuff off and then stick it over the wire to hold the lights in place and to try and hopefully make it not stand out too much. I was hoping the black cardstock would would kind of fade into the background and wouldn't be, you know, in your face. Okay, so I did that, brought the lights up toward the front and then went, I drilled a hole in the back here so that the lights would go up this side over here. But before I put them up that side, this box is a little bit different than the top and bottom in the sense that I wanted to light up this amazing vintage lantern. So as it came up through the bottom, I pulled it over. I put two lights in. I don't even know if you can see them, but there are two lights in here. And then I kind of pushed them toward the back so that the lights themselves weren't showing just the light was glowing through the and so mostly when you look at it you just see the glow you don't see the light bulbs then I pulled the wire back out toward the corner held it down with some of that uh, black craft stock with the tape uh, behind the in the corner behind the portrait and then I put it up you can see I have the paper in the corner over there pulled it across on the top toward the front and then sent it back into a hole that I covered up because you could see it um, I wanted and I did this on the very bottom one too because you can see the light coming through because on both of these there's usually a light bulb almost right there where the hole is so I wanted to cover it up so the light wasn't shining through and causing you to look back there so I, I put on both of these I put um, a piece of paper there where it went through to keep the light from shining down but there is a hole there so then it goes up again behind this portrait and then up toward the front where it ends up here so that's the pathway that all my lights took to be able to light this up including our adorable little lantern there in the front now as far as the things in each uh, box. Um, let's take just a second to talk about um, also how I covered up the lights. Because the lights are in the front, you don't want to have the bulbs staring out at you. Just like you didn't want them staring out at you from the mask, you also don't want them staring out at you from the top. So you have to cover them up somehow. And so at the top, I used the bat and at the bottom, I just used it as a decorative element so that I could keep it, you know, uniform. So I have bats at the top and bottom. And if you look close, you can see there's some detail on the bat. That is some of the new Distress Black Texture Paste that is out. It is seasonal. It is just for the season. So if you love adding elements to things, um, it's really difficult to get texture paste to turn black without just like painting over it. So this is so amazing. I had already painted these and decided I wanted some texture on all of them. And so that's what that is on every single one of them. I used a stencil from Tim Holt and Stampers Anonymous and I just put a little texture paste through there and that was it. Super easy to do. Just added a little interest. I absolutely love it. So black opaque texture paste from Tim Holtz and Ranger Ink. Okay, so these etc. trims are the spiders and cobwebs etc. trims as I talked about from Tim and Stampers Anonymous. I did trim the two in the center so that they were even, but I left the bat wings because I didn't want to trim this off. So that's why I decided instead of doing bat, spider, bat, spider, I decided to do the bat at the top and the bottom to kind of balance it out and then just the spider webs in the middle but the problem is is that the spider webs didn't really cover the uh, lights 
and if I pulled them down so that this part did cover the lights, then this was off. It just looked weird. So I added a stacking strip under each one and painted it black to cover the lights. So there's an additional stacking strip under there. And I, I don't think it's too distracting. Uh, I think it's fine. You still see through the bottom of the, the cobweb, so it, it looks fine to me. And additionally, I went ahead and finished drilling on each side here and adding the rest of the tack nails. Originally, I had planned to do in the center as well, but I felt like with all of the detail that was on these, I really wanted those to show through and not to have people focused on the middle uh, tack nail. So I just put them on the sides here, but in the back, I do have them in the centers just for fun, you know, just add a little interest there on the back and the sides. All right, let's talk about now uh, the things that are being illuminated by the lights that we just talked about. So in the top, we have uh, this one girl. I did explain that I colored her with Distress uh, pencil, color pencils, uh, watercolor pencils, and used my water brush just to color her dress in and her hair. I added a mask. And then I went through and from the base board uh, release, the baseboard pack, I cut apart two of the these little quote strips. And the first one said, a strange thing happened. And the second one said, lost in the darkness. So I just cut off lost so that it said, a strange thing happened in the darkness. Good enough. Kind of adds a little bit more interest. And additionally, on a couple of them, especially this one, it covers up some of the lights that were behind them that weren't hidden enough by the portraits. I have the little 31 cents back there. I used, instead of using that crepe fringe up at the tops, I actually used it to just fill in blanks here and there. And I thought that was kind of fun. I put a little in the very bottom here, glued it in, and then I glued in with collage medium the candy sticks and just kind of put these around here with a little bit of that fringe here and there for interest and texture. And for the candies, I just ran over them with a little bit of brushed corduroy distress ink. And that gave them just a little bit of age, but not too much. So it it fit in, but it didn't stand out as a bright white. I didn't want the bright white. For box number two, I painted three of the drippy candles. And once I had them all painted in the uh, crackling campfire color, which I thought matched perfectly with our lantern, then I went over them once they were completely dry. I went over them with very watered down black soot. And you just put it all the way over and then spritz a little bit of water and you can take and lightly wipe off with a like an inky binky or a cloth or something so that they just look aged just like this, right? You just want a little bit. You don't want it to completely cover it, but you do want it to go down into those crevices and things so that the, the age of the drippy candles fits with your whatever you're pairing them with. All right, and then uh, I have uh, this gentleman. I just really only, I think on him, I colored his, his hair and his beard and his shirt. In our bottom box, we have the portrait of the gentleman, and I believe I only colored his jacket brown. I colored his shirt, and I don't think I colored in his hair, added the mask. And the In the Darkness is definitely covering up the light in the back corner, but I also have some of the crepe fringe to try and help cover it up. Uh, I did not plan that one well, and so the light was really showing back there. I have a little 15 over 2, and that is covered somewhat by this. This is one of the medium drippy candles, and I painted it orange, yellow, and uh, antique linen so that it would look like candy corn to go with the candy corn and here we have candy corn in a cauldron and normally I use a little um, half of a foam ball or something uh, to kind of fill this but since I had so much crepe laying around I actually crinkled crepe up and glued it in and then I added the candy corn on top and they just look so good and so wonderful 
additional couple of candy corns out here. And so that's why I think the candy corn uh, candle on the, uh, this is the small candle stand that's in the back corner. I just think that that looks fun. It just makes, it adds just kind of a fun um, layer to this, this scene. And all of the candy on here is the candy that you can get in the one confections pack. So that's a lot of candy uh, to, you know, to be able to do something with. So I know generally when I am making a piece with candy in it, that you're used to me just really going over the top with the candy and making all kinds of different other types of candy and adding it in and wrapping everything and all of that. But this really wasn't a candy focused make as much as it was kind of a carnival, Halloween party, that kind of thing, uh, type make and inspira inspiration uh, piece rather than, you know, candy focused. So I just wanted to use the candy that you would be able to get in one pack and not do too much to it. These, just like these, I went over with a little bit of brushed corduroy just to make sure that the white wasn't too bright and that it also went with uh, the candle. Now, when I painted the candle, I did the same thing that I did with these, but I painted the orange strip and let it dry. And I tried not to paint the drips, but you know, you get some of the orange on the drips. And I tried to paint all the way up so that it would look like just the top was maybe white but the drips are definitely gonna be white, right? Because they're they're coming down from the top. So once the orange was dry, then I went ahead and painted with the antique linen and went over the drips. And then at the very bottom, I add a little bit of mustard seed for that um, little bottom bit of yellow. And then once it was all completely dry, just like these, I washed over with a uh, watered down black soot so that it would go down into the crevices and I wiped off most of it but that gave it that aged antique look. All right, and I think that's pretty much all of the details. Really love how the outside work turned out. I think it's just so much fun. I really, I can't get over this. I love this so much. I just don't know why, but it's just so wonderful. Just the age to it, I guess. I don't know, but I love that glue, glue thing. And then we have the lottery card and we have the for skill and amusement sign think that all the little tack nails add a fun dimension and I like just the slightly raised area here. So that is it. Those are all the details for this make and as always. If I didn't answer something and you would like a little bit more information on how to do it, um, please contact me um, if I left something out that you need to know about. All right, so but thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate your support in watching. And I hope that this inspires you to get making for the season. So I want to wish you with that a very creative day.